Welcome to Lecture Online, and in this video, we're going to summarize the four thermodynamic processes. We have the isobaric process, the isovolumetric process, the isothermic process, and the adiabatic process. In the isobaric process, pressure is constant. In the isovolumetric process, volume is constant. In the isothermic process, temperature is constant. And in the adiabatic process, nothing is constant. And then we, of course, have the associated PV diagrams, pressure versus volume diagrams. And so when a gas expands in, a, in the isobaric process, it goes straight across. Notice that the pressure doesn't change. In an isovolumetric process, the gas cannot expand because it has the volume is constant. So by adding heat to the gas, the gas will simply gain, uh, gain energy and therefore the pressure will increase. In an isothermic process, the amount of work done by the gas equals the amount of heat it receives in such a way that the internal energy doesn't change and so the isothermic process means that it just simply falls in isotherm, the temperature does not change. And then finally, in an adiabatic process, it happens so quickly that no energy is received from the outside and so the expansion can only occur if it receives energy from within itself, so all the work done is, uh, is accomplished by taking energy from within the gas itself, the internal energy. So the peculiarity about each of these processes is that in the case of the pressure being constant, we know that the work done is equal to the pressure times the change in the volume, which also, of course, is defined right here. It's simply the pressure times the change in the volume. In the isovolumetric process, the peculiarity there, as you can see, is that the work done is equal to zero because it cannot expand. The gas can only do work if the gas expands, cannot expand, cannot do work. In an isothermic process, since the temperature doesn't change in the gas, the internal energy cannot change. So here we can say that delta U is equal to zero. And finally, in an adiabatic process, it happens so quickly that Q is equal to zero. There's no heat added or removed from the gas, so Q is equal to zero. So we have for isovolumetric, work is zero. Isothermic, change in internal energy is zero. And in adiabatic, Q is zero. And that, of course, is all related to the first law of thermodynamics, where it says that the change in internal energy of a gas is equal to the heat added to the gas minus the work done by the gas. So in the case of an isovolumetric process, since W is equal to zero, we know that the change in internal energy is simply equal to the heat added to the gas. In the case of an isothermic process, since delta U is zero, then we know that therefore that zero is equal to Q minus W, so that means that Q equals W, the work done by the gas equals to the heat received by the gas. And then finally here we can say since Q is equal to zero, that means that delta U is equal to minus W, or W is equal to minus delta U. And so therefore we can simply find the work done by knowing how much internal energy changes. Now that's of course a little bit more complicated with an adiabatic process because since none of the three variables are constant, we have to find the relationship between P, V, and T in an adiabatic process. Okay, how do we define the work done in each case? Well, in this case, the work done is zero, so that's simple enough, work is zero. In this case, the work done can be defined as nRT, because T doesn't change, that's a constant number, times the natural log of the ratio of the volume that you end up with, divided by the volume you started with. And if, those, if uh, temperature is not known in this case, you can also replace that by P1 times V1, so work done can also be ex expressed as P1 V1 times the natural log of V2 over V1, or you can say that work done is equal to P2 V2 times the natural log of V2 over V1. So there's a lot of different ways to figure out the work done in an isothermic process. The work done in an adiabatic process can be defined as the negative of the change in internal energy, which can be defined as the number of moles times C sub V times the change in temperature, which is T1 minus uh, T, uh, T2 minus T1. And of course, if those are not known, you could also express the work done as being equal to minus C sub V over R times uh, P2 V2 minus P1 V1. So you can find the work done in either way with an adiabatic process. The change in internal energy is always going to be the same for every uh, 
every layer of I should call it a thermodynamic process. I'm kind of stumbling over my words here. But in general, the equation always is going to be n c sub v times delta t. So here, since pressure is constant, that is pretty well the only way you can do that. In the case of an isovolumetric process, delta u is equal to q. And so we can also say that the delta u here, which is equal to q, which is equal to n c sub v delta t. And notice that in the case, in the case of an isovolumetric process where v is constant, q is also n c sub v delta t, which is not always the case. In an isothermic process, uh, delta u is zero, so q is simply equal to the work done. So whatever you find out is the equation for work, that's also the equation for q. And then here, q is all, always equal to zero, so there we don't have to worry about the heat added to a gas. Finally, um, q here in an isobaric process is a little bit different than there. Here it is n c sub p delta t. And notice that c sub p is different from c sub v, so the heat added to a gas is different if it's an isobaric process compared to when it is an isovolumetric process. And don't forget that because sometimes uh, you'll have to figure out Q in either an isobaric or an iso isovolumetric process, and it is indeed different. So be careful that those are not the same. It does depend, the heat added to a gas does depend upon how the gas expands or whether or not the gas expands at all. So here's a quick little overview that uh, you can always refer to in case you forget uh, how to find W, how to find delta U, and how to find Q, W of course being work, in, an, in, a, in a thermodynamic process. And uh, so these are the four main processes that you need to know when you, when you study thermodynamics.